Hello my friends, I am Jeff from Jeff's Oil Paintings and I'm here uh, to present you my first beginning to end tutorial. So uh, I had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go through the colors that we're going to use on this. Please uh, feel free to paint along with me uh, and have some fun. So we'll get started. Here are the colors we're going to use. I do use Gamblin, probably about half Gamblin, half Bob Ross. And uh, for today, uh, we're gonna, we've got some Crimson, uh, some Dark Sienna, Van Dyke Brown, uh, Mountain Mix. I love Mountain Mix. It's a great invention. Uh, instead of common, combining your darker colors, this right here, ready to go out of the tube, I use it all the time. Uh, Prussian Blue, Thalo Blue, uh, some Thalo Green, uh, Titanium White. Uh, I highly recommend the Gamblin Artist Series Titanium White. Uh, not the 1980, but the Artist Series. It is super thick, great for mountains uh, and clouds. Uh, down here we got some uh, bright red, uh, yellow, uh, Indian yellow, yellow ochre. Uh, I got two piles of CAD uh, yellow because I'm always dirty in them, so I uh, use a lot of yellow on the foliage. And then some sap green down here. So uh, we're going to get rolling. All right, so I'm just going to go into a little bit. Uh, just a very little bit of the Lizard and Crimson. Just a bit. Just, and I like to tap it out so I don't get too much on there. You can always add more, tougher to add less. Or take it off. So we'll probably put a little bit right in here. Like that. A little more. Maybe that'll kind of up like that. Now I'm going to go into just a little bit of uh, phthalo blue, just a touch. And don't have to clean the brush because of course it'll just make a nice lavender. And I'm going to kind of come around that just a little bit. that you can leave some white spots that's fine that's fine uh, then I'm gonna go into some Prussian blue a little darker on the corners just kind of bring that in a little bit Again, just throw it on there. We'll blend it out. And we'll have some water. So I will take some the phthalo blue a little bit, grab a touch of the phthalo green, just a little bit of the phthalo green in there. Um, and then that blue, just tap it in real good. We'll come down here and from the outside in. I like that. Always from the outside in, we want a feathered edge here. So it's easier to blend here. And so we'll just come in. Like that. A little more color. A little darker down here. And try and keep it kind of zigzaggy so it's not a straight line. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Even a little Prussian blue was fine in there too. And you can use a two inch brush for this. Um, I happen to have this one out, whatever. About like that, a little darker down here. And a lot of this 
It's all going to be covered on the side, so we're not too worried about that. Now I like to bring my sky, I like to bring it down a little bit, kind of so that the whole canvas just about is covered in case I change my mind. So something like that. All right. Now we'll take a dry brush, take a two inch dry brush. And we're going to blend. So we'll start in the pink area and then work our way out to the borders of the pink area. The pink. So just start up on the pink. Oops, pink hair. Okay, start up on the pink and blend out those edges. Ooh, lordy. Knock that off. So we'll knock those edges down. And work your way out. Oops, shaking around. You use circles, X's. And then go up to the corners. And sometimes I'll go through and just darken the corners a little bit. It's a little phthalo blue. I'm sorry, Prussian blue, Prussian blue up here. Just to darken it a little bit on the top there. Beat that brush out. And come back and blend there again. I always like to have a roll of paper towels to keep that brush clean. So you go through a lot of paper towels for sure. All right, so go back here and blend this a little bit. And lightly across. There we go. That's good there. And then for the bottom here, I'm going to grab a little bit of the crimson that we put up here and spread that out a little bit. Okay, and then when I do the bottom, I like to start my blending in the middle on those feathered edges. And then work your way out. Again, all this has been covered. And then that little sheen, little light spot will be our little sheen of water, as you guys know. All right, very good. So we'll leave that like that. Now, we're going to take a fan brush. I'm going to put some clouds up in our sky. I'm not going to go too crazy on the clouds, just maybe a couple. Um, uh, we'll spend a little more time on the mountain and, and the foreground. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take my fan brush and go through a little bit of this titanium white. Let me get behind it here. So just load up both sides of the brush really nice. I'm going to take, go come down here and just touch this red. Just touch barely anything just to give a little bit of a pinkish flow. So pull that through, lots of paint. Okay, now we'll come up here and we'll just put a few in maybe right about, maybe we'll have one here. Just I 
just little spins is basically what I do, little spinny spins. A lot of paint. Don't be afraid to use a lot of paint. Lots of paint. Take a two a one inch a one inch brush. You hear this? And we're just going to come through, blend out the bottom, try not to touch the top, leave some holes. Just kind of touch it up like that. Same thing over here. Clean my brush out and come back here and just gently, kind of in a circular motion, just a little bit of a fluff. Just lightly. And then just real gently. I barely touch them coming back. Just gently. Something like that. And you always got to stand back. Stand back and, and look at what you got going on before you move forward. Alright, so we'll come to the other side. Maybe come down in here. Drizzles right in front of him. Like that. I have a mountain over here, so I don't want to put too much. He just kind of drifts across that. There we go. And then again, a blender. I'm actually going to use my other blender on this. It's a little softer. And just gently, gently touch that. And a little circular strokes. All right. Now, if you want. If you wanted to add a little bit of shadow, you could come in there with a little bit of a darker color, even like a blue, um, maybe a little Prussian blue, just a touch, like I'm just barely, like, and then tapping it here so I don't get too much in there. And then you can kind of come in here gently and just spill a little bit of this. to add some shadows in the cloud. Maybe something like that. And come back with your blender. And you can kind of blend that in a wee bit. Real gently, barely touching. And 
And I think that's about all I'm going to do for that. All right, now we're going to put a mountain in here. So for that, I'm going to use my mountain mix. Which I have in the palette right here. So we're just going to pull some mountain mix out. Just cut, you know, pull it flat. Cut off a little bit. And we'll put our shape in. So I'm thinking today we're going to have one here. So maybe we'll come up there. Just make it crooked. Don't go straight. Okay. And then maybe we'll do something like this. There. And again, the, the big thing with this is to not have a pointy top. You know, keep it a little jagged. I like to put these knife marks like here because that gives you a fresh place to pull your highlight, which is kind of nice. So this will come over like this, down, maybe to here. A little more paint. And then just bring that off off like that. Okay, and then maybe this one will circle around to here. Look a little bit higher than the other one. Another thing is to try and make sure your peaks are not all the same. Yeah, different heights. And then uh, maybe here. I'll take that off. The next step, you want to scrape as much paint off as possible. That will make the final step of the highlighting so much easier. So you want to get this paint out. So just take your knife, scrape. Oops, that's all right. That happens, no problems. There we go. Get all that paint off of there. I like to wipe my knife knife off as I do it. Oops. Again, we'll put another little peak there. There we go. See? Happy accident. Get all this paint off. Alright. We'll take that brush that we uh, blended with. I'm just going to wipe it off. And pull this paint out. We want to pull the paint out, removes the excess paint. So we'll come over here, pull, this way, pull that paint down. And wipe. Get that excess paint off. Because it'll make your highlighting so much easier when you get all that paint off your, your mountain. So pull it down so that we go from a darker color down to a lighter color. And if it's nice and gradual, you'll get the effect of the mist without having to put any mist in, which is what you want. So once you pull that down, if you just kind of do this, right, really pull that other paint off. There's no method to it, just pull it down. It'll all be covered. And mist this out just by doing this. Just circular strokes. Maybe want this a little further. Pull that out. That liquid white allows us to pull that paint. So there we go. Now we have a nice big mountain hanging out in the sky. All right. So, now that I got that done, the next thing I want to do is I still have a lot of paint there. So, at this point, I like to take a shop towel or a paper towel. Shop towel won't leave little stringy things all over the place, which is the nice thing about them. 
I'm going to take the shop towel, and then I have to wipe this surface carefully. So come up here, so you can see how much paint is still on there. So I like to come by here and wipe it off, because it's going to get that extra liquid white that's on there off of there, all the extra mountain color. Just be careful, don't go up into your sky. And you don't have to go right to the edge, but just get the majority of it off. And don't worry about the lines. We'll re-blend all this again. We're just trying to get this paint off. There we go. Yeah, I know it looks funky. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll come back with our brush. And we'll just blend this out again to get rid of all those paper towel marks. And it'll all be covered up anyways. But again, it's going to make the next, next part so much easier. Okay, very good. All right. Yeah, now that all that paint's off of there, it's going to make it much easier to highlight it. So that's that's the main reason for doing it. Now that I'm here, I see something I want to fix. Here's one thing you can do. I don't like I don't like this sharp perch here, so I'm going to change it. Bring it a little bit out like that. I like that better. That's the cool thing about painting you, oils, you can make little changes like that. And that's okay if it's a little darker, it's on the, it's on the shadow side anyways. Very good. All right. So, uh, highlighting this, I'm, ju I'm just going to use some white. I, I will probably put a touch of the red in it just because of the, you know, the pink in the mountains. So just a little bit. So I'm going to pull this out flat with that. And I'll probably do a combination of my small knife and my larger knife. I prefer I prefer the larger knife. Um, to me it's more balanced, you know, when you set it down, but uh, you know, this is a smaller canvas at 16 by 20, so sometimes it's harder to fit in here. So, anyways, Pull that out nice and flat. Got a little pink in there. Okay, and we're just going to cut across. Just get a little roll of paint. Doesn't have to be a lot of paint. Some people are, it depends on what, what's, what you're comfortable with. Uh, some people prefer, you know, a little thicker roll. Some people like a thinner roll. Whatever works for you. With any advice I give, whatever works for you. That, that's the most important thing. Um, if you can paint with a butter knife, paint with a butter knife. <laughs> All right, so let's come up here. Uh, maybe we'll start um, back on this peak over here. So what I like to do, hold your knife gently, almost so it's like a swivel, and it can go either way. You're going to have it so gently, I drop it quite often, because I have it so gently, and this paint is so thick that it'll grab. So you gotta got to like have a little bit of uh, grip on it, but uh, you just want to go slowly. Um, I know, you know, Bob Ross, you watch Bob Ross, and he does these long sweeping strokes. And that's fine if you can do that. And I like to do that further down the mountain. But for beginners, I found when I teach, it's much easier to do short strokes. Just little short choppy type strokes to get, at least to get started. To feel that little break in the paint. And if you do that, um, I think you'll be more successful. Once you get pretty comfortable with that, you're, and you're able to do those long ones, that's fine too. I also find the short choppy strokes will give you more cragglies, you know, you, wherever there's a little break and you start again, that dark area is a little rock section. It doesn't look like it's one swoop. It looks like there's many jagged rocks going up and down. So anyways, so you want to touch just above the dark. We don't want to have any dark sticking out here. So I know it's hard to see. I don't want to get my head in the way here. But come up here and just touch there, and we're just going to gently, gently pull. And 
as you can see, see how that paint falls right off. It's a very thick paint. We'll come up to this point. Just, just kiss, just letting that paint touch. We don't want so much the blade as much until we get towards the end. At these beginning strokes, you really just want the paint to touch. And if you do that, you can see it really just breaks right off very nicely. And think about what you're doing. And I don't see these like thick spots here. I like that. Don't feel like you got to smush those out. Sometimes they're very cool. It gives a lot of texture to your mountain. And when the light shines on it, you actually do get a shadow behind it. So it's kind of cool. If you if you go over them a little too much, you can you can smear it up. So if you do go over, just real gently, not much, just barely touch it. But I tell you what, I, I kind of like them when they sit up like that. It looks kind of neat. So we're going to come back, but I want to come over here first. Wipe my knife off a little bit to get any of that darker paint. So we're going to come over here. So we'll start at this point. Let me get that little dab of paint off of there. Right here. Bring this one right over into that, like that. Go slow. I can't express that enough. Take your time when you're moving that knife. Just don't, you know, take your time. If you can do it fast, hey, knock your socks off. But the majority of the people are going to need to go a little bit slower. It gives you more control. So, yeah, don't, don't rush through it. Take your time when you're painting these things. So now I'm going to come up to this next little knife point that I put. And again, very slow. Oops, got to cover that end. See? Now, I might come back. See, I stopped short. Maybe I come right here, leaving a little dark here. And maybe my next one, I start there. And now these dark areas are crevices. So we're going to have this. This is going to spill over into this, like so. Okay? So we'll keep working our way down. Oops. Again, this one's going to be, we're going to pull this one up and this one this way. As we get lower on the mountain, you want to more level out your strokes. Up here, they're a little straight, then here, then here. So as we get a little lower, we're going to flatten those out a little bit. Something like Alright, so let's go back up here and pull that paint out flat again. It's a little roll. Oh, let's see here. We're going to do this one maybe. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to put one more here. And again, I like to keep no straight lines. You know, try not to do split your mountain in half, you know, highlight, shadow. Try, try and break it up. Um, it is uh, more natural. Okay. So I'm going to come on this side. And we're going to have a little bit of a curl into here. that and we'll see mountains are like puzzles and I've said this to many of you before mountains are like puzzles it's like you you put the pieces together but you could decide the size of the pieces and where they go uh, so it's pretty cool I enjoy painting them they are fun that's for sure maybe this will just kind of come out this way something like that
and step back. That's the big thing. You got to step back from your painting. Um, it's important. That way you can see everything a little bit better. I want to come in here and blend this out a little bit. See if I can do it with this brush. Kind of a hard line there. We're going to cover it anyways, but I just wanted to bring it down a little bit. Good enough. Okay. So now I'm going to start messing with the with the, the, the shadow side. And for the shadow side, probably just going to do a little blue and white. Uh, generally, that is good enough. So I'll come up here and take a little bit of that phthalo blue and a little white. Uh, and experiment. Leave it, you know, again, leave it marbled. Usually when I do my, when I do my uh, shadows, um, you know, I'll do the shadows. And then I like to come back and even add more uh, colors, more darks. And, and you'll see as we go here. So... Let's get rolling here. I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is come over here, get a little roll, and again leave the the different color variations. So we're gonna come up to this one, and I just start at the top, and I I follow the outline is what I try and do, and I want to bring this one down into this. So actually, I might even bring it a little under it. So we'll start here. Don't worry about if you touch this; we can fix that. So we're just gonna gently. The shadow side is very forgiving. Don't sweat your shadow side because it's the shadow. You can't, you can't even see it. So don't really don't worry about your shadows as much. Just kind of put those in. And then here I kind of like to bring that in and up a little bit. You'll bring in this and let those little white things stay. They look cool. So if you get those little white bits and pieces up there, just little high points on that side. So I'm not going to do too much more to that. And then I'll take the small edge of the knife for more of these tighter spots. Or use the small knife itself. Add some dark. I like that. Don't worry about that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here now, and I, now that I have. Most of this, I like to come in and drizzle some dark through here. So I just got some mountain mix, basically. And just gently, just let it barely touch. Here, not a lot. Just a few, see, just a few spots, some deep crevices. Um, and you just want to graze them. Smaller knife is better for this. something like that. And then I also like to come back and take some white like on the heel of my knife. Just a little bit. Like that. And you can drizzle some of this over. Just like you know, there's a little bit of sunlight. Oops. Just curving over a wee bit. See that? Not too much. Just a little bit here and there. And if you don't like it, you can just rub it away. Just get some, some more of that blue and just take it right away. See that? So, yeah, it's so forgiving over here. So, you don't let it... You can take away stuff if you think it's too much. Very easy to do. And then it's also cool, I'm going to get my smaller brush, my smaller knife, sorry. And then you can also do the same with white. You can drizzle just a hair of some high spots, maybe. Just go real careful, barely touch. Not much. That's probably about all I do. Just a little bit. Just gives it a lot of uh, 
different looks. It's not the same flat kind of color. So now we're going to go to this side. Again, add a little white to that blue. And a little more. And again, leave even marbled. A nice marbly shade. So you got white, blue, you got a little bit of everything in there. So over here, we're going to start here and just follow this outline. Cut right under that. And don't worry about the hole. Leave the holes. The holes are good. The holes are just more dark. Kind of bringing that into that. And we'll play back and forth here. Oops, a little heavy. Let's get rid of that a wee bit. There we go. There. See a little accident? Turns happy. And again, we just play back and forth this into the shadow. So we got the sun coming and then our shadow here. So we just kind of play back and forth between the two. Always step back and take a look. Step back. I don't like this. Again, just going back and forth, playing with it. Maybe this comes down like that. And again, getting flatter as we get lower here. A little more shadow. dark there. We can fix it. Come back with a little white. Again, you can just keep going and going and going until a mountain eats up your whole canvas. I've done it many times. <laughs> we'll have to stop this one. Right, very good. A little white over here. Extend that down just a wee bit. And we're going to blend most of this out anyway. So. A couple little bumps. All right. So we got this last little peak over here. Let's highlight this guy over here, or put the shadow on him. So let's see here. Again, I like to follow just the top line. I don't worry about the rest of it. Uh, just follow that. It's really all you got to do. Again, that shadow side is so forgiving. Um, you don't need much there, and it can be sloppy. So that's what I like about it.
and we can clean this edge a little bit. And again, we can run those together, something like that. And then you can sometimes I like to come through not too much, but if you want it to blend a little bit, this coming into this, you can certainly do that. That, not too much, just maybe where they come together a wee bit. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to go back with just a little bit of dark. I'm going to use that mountain mix. Just a little bit of that mountain, just barely any on your knife, barely. And then you can go anywhere in there's, where there's blue. And, and just drop a little drizzle. Oops, that was not what you wanted. I'll fix that. But just a little bit here and there. And I'll go up and fix this. See, you need about how forgiving they are up here. You just scrape it right away. <laughs> Anything can be fixed in this technique, really. But again, just drizzling a little bit of dark here and there. Just keep the brush or your knife moving. Just a wee bit. There we go. All right. I'll take a step back and take a look. Again, you got to take a step back. It's so important. Um, very good. Only thing I want to do that I see is I need a little bit of white. Mm -hmm. Let me see where was that? Yeah, right here. This cuts off a little brief here. So we're going to extend this over just a wee bit. Maybe like that. I like that a little better. Take a fan brush. I'm going to put a little uh, some trees, a little peninsula of trees out here. I'm going to make sure. I think we'll go a little less than half, so maybe about to here. So I'm I'm just going to use a straight up mountain mix for this. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of green, put a little green in it, just to give it a little green tint. But basically, pretty much straight mountain mix. So I'm just going to load up my fan brush, uh, get kind of a nice chiseled edge on it. And then we're going to put a line of trees. I think we're going to start about right here. Sometimes I like to just use a guide. So I know my biggest ones will probably be right here in the center. Um, and again, just kind of using this as a guide. I'll fill the rest of it in. I like to get these nice clean tops. Um, and then again, we're just going to fade these back to nothing here. Just like that. Then we'll come in and kind of fill different heights, some high, some low. And then the bottom you want to fill in. Try not to leave gaps in here. It doesn't look right. The bottom is going to be dense and thick. So and we're just going to work this off till it just disappears back here. And once you get here, you can go sideways and just lift up. So that'll be not even in the painting, so we're not worried about it too much. 
Again, you want to make sure those trees are going straight up and down. If you're not careful, I can I do it all the time. I, they're leaning a little bit, so be careful. So again, we're going to fill this in. And then this is going to turn and go back off into the distance this way. So we're just going to get smaller and smaller. And then you go flat, just lift up. And again, we'll fill this in. So they have all different lengths on the top. And again, we're just going to tap in the bottom. Don't worry about it getting down. We'll have reflections here, so no big deal. But we do want this dark. At least I do. color, darken it up a wee bit. And again, that's going to go off over here. If you chisel that edge, you get a little bit better clean tops. And I go back and clean up my tops. And again, this is going off into whatever over there. We're not too worried about that. Again. All right, very good. Now we're going to come back. Make sure it's all straight. Use the Kevin Hill brush. And we're going to pull down our reflection. So decide where we want. And just pull straight down. This is going to go back a little bit. Other hair. Pull down. Good. Wipe the brush off. And then we'll go across gently. Gives us that nice shimmer. You can go this way, this way, make them a little crooked, however you like. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks again, Harold. I appreciate it, buddy. All right. Now, I'm going to come in with my filbert brush, and I'm going to make a couple of these more distinguishable. So I just got a small filbert brush here with some mountain mix, and we're just going to come down. And just make a few tops that we can see. Might even use the smaller one. A few of these will be distinguishable. And again, this is just a filbert brush, a very small filbert. And this is far off, so we're not too worried about these. Just to have a couple, couple here that appear closer. One thing I find a lot of, of uh, beginning uh, painters do um, is to show distance. Sometimes they make this bank line go up or down or up or down. When what you want to do is it's going to be relatively... Yeah, we're going to have little indentations here, but the biggest thing is that the trees close to you are bigger than the, these. So we obviously now can see that these are far away. These are closer. So that's what you want. So try not to make your banks go up and down. I see that a lot. It looks like a, you know, the water is running down from both sides, and you, you don't want that. So we can add a couple more of these. Um, but not too many. 
Oops. More paint. And again, these are far off, so they don't nothing fancy here. That might do it. Maybe one more. Maybe we'll plop one right here. And again, don't need too much. Okay, good. Now we're going to add some little banks. Let me come back here and check the comments real quick. Cocktail soon. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to add a little land, and for that, again, I'm just going to take some of that mountain mix. So we'll have some rocks here. And we're just putting in a, a basic shape. So go back like this. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, let me get some of this off. A little thick. And it'll come off this way, too. And again, just putting a dark color in. Doesn't have to be fancy, just going to be some rocks. Like that. All right. Now to highlight those, we'll just take some, uh, take some of this, uh, maybe this sienna, and a little bit of white. So sienna and a little bit of light, and leave it marbled. So you have different different streaks of color. Okay, and then we'll just get a little bit of that. And then we'll come over here and just do different ledges. I just kind of like to streak across the ledge a little bit. Oops, barely touch. And leave these dark spots because that's little that's crevices in this rock. It comes down. Even a little white, a little white here and there. Something like that. Just a little rocky shoreline. <laughs> no, no tree blending, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, now I'm going to come by here and put in a little water line. And for that, 
I will. Sometimes I just use like my titanium white. I know a lot of times we'll see uh, uh, liquid white, but I'm um, just going to go a little, just a very little bit. As we go back, and if you cut in a little bit, it gives that appearance that it's going further back. It's too bright. Just rub it a couple times, she'll go away. Something like that. There we go. Now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get a fan brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of highlights. Oh, where's my fan brush? All right. So yeah, I'm going to come back here and just put some bushes under here. So basically I'm just going to use like a mushed out fan brush like this. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit of liquid white. So I got a little bit of liquid white. And I'm going to go down here a little bit of green. I'm just kind of splaying the brush out a little bit. So I'm just going to tap in. It'll be difficult to see. But just kind of splaying the brush out a little bit and then come here and Just touching. It's very subtle. You don't see it, but they're back there. Just stub them in there. Again, not much. Just a little greenery under there. And that's really about all we need. Excellent. Okie doke. We're right, moving forward. All right, so we're going to have a little peninsula over here. Let me get my knife. Inch. All right, so we'll take our fan brush. We're going to put a peninsula on this side with some trees under it. I think it'll be about right about here. And we can just basically push in some color. some trees on this boy too so good another filbert go into our mountain mix with a little bit of green load up the brush pretty good and we're going to put a couple trees here on this peninsula. So maybe we'll have the first one. Uh, maybe about right here. Be there. Maybe we'll do another one here. A little taller. Um, maybe one's going to pop out there. We'll see. All right, so with this filbert, I just like to start at the top and then tapping, working outward a little bit each time. I like this filbert, it gives nice little hangy downs. Reload paint. There. This guy was 
over here. Wipe that brush off, picking up that underpaint. shorter guy right back there once you get down here it doesn't matter we'll separate all that with highlights I like to get a little darker now. Very good. Thank you, Harold. Appreciate it. I think we're going to put one more tree over here. Maybe one more right here. up a lot of that underpaint. So I can make sure this is plenty dark. Very good. And then we're going to go to the other side. And on the other side, we'll have a peninsula. My fan brush and some dark color. We're going to go. Stretch this boy out a little bit to there. And then this one we'll put maybe right here. Kind of like that. Fill that in. And this doesn't matter. We're just putting in dark. Just putting in dark. Push it in. Mush it in there. Very good. I'm going to throw some trees on that boy. Very good. Now for these trees, I think we'll use this big fan brush. And we're going to put a couple bigger trees. Maybe here. Lots of paint, lots of paint on your fan brush. And just using the corner, if you can see, I don't want to get in the way here, but I also don't want to mess it up. And we're just going to tap and go side to side. One more color. Um, 
the bottom. You can extend a couple of those out if you want. It's easy to do. Very good. And we'll go give him a brother or a sister. We'll put this guy right here. I just use the like to use this as a guide. Keep it straight. Again, the corner of the brush. And we're going to tap. Going back and forth. Working our way down. that. Let's see here. Okay, we got one here. Oops. Stray hair. Stained my canvas. Created a cool effect though, so we'll leave it. Happy accident. Like that. More paint. And we got a little guy right there. And we'll just touch. You probably won't even get no highlights back there. Very good. And then maybe there's a little shorter one. About right there. Back there, it really doesn't matter. Just darken it in. We can separate all that later with highlights. Bring this out a little bit. All right, coming along. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I know, I, I kind of messed that up. <laughs> sorry, Dylan. But I do got to fix this. There we go. A little stub off of there. Oops. All right, very good. Okay. Now, put some trunks in some of these. So we'll just take a little bit of the uh, little little bit of the dark sienna and your Van Dyke brown and a little white. This is what we had on here. A little marbled. A little roll. And we're just going to touch in a few spots, not much. There. Some more paint. trunk. There 
boy sticks up there. In the background. Just a couple. Maybe over here. good now we're going to highlight these trees and for that I'm going to use this same fan brush as this dark color I'm going to wipe it off a little bit actually I'm going to use my filbert so I'm going to use that filbert that had the dark color Brush that off, and we're going to go into a little bit of my liquid white. I like to put a little pile of the liquid white up here. Yeah. And then we're going to go take this dark color, we're going to go through some of this yellow. All right, grab a little more of that dark, which will give us a nice green. Steal that dark color, and it's runny, and that's what we want. A little more of that dark. Get your the shade you want. Wipe my brush, and then I just like to push it forward in the paint. Get a little ridge of paint on there. Just a little ridge. Then we come back up here and we're just going to touch gently leaving a lot of the dark our lights coming from here so we're going to highlight this side of the tree that's a little better A little yellow. A little too yellow. Oops. Darken that up a little bit. Just a little bit of highlight here and there. This tree will be our front tree. On this side, very light. Leave it mostly dark. Highlight color. We're just touching gently. Hmm. A little trouble getting this to come off. One moment. This guy back here we're barely going to touch.
know if that's coming through or not. Close enough. All right, just a touch on this side. Good. Come over here and just touch a couple of these. Very good. I'm going to come down into my yellow, the second pile of yellow. With, I'm going to use my uh, one inch brush. I'll come over here and grab a touch of green, even a touch of phthalo green. Pull that out and really smash the, smash the brush in there. Lots of paint. Okay, coming here, we're going to put a few bushes in. So we'll start right here, just using the top corner, just touch. See that? Comes right off. Very nice. Maybe we'll add another yellow one over here. Like that. Now we're going to get a couple brushes going. Get my oval going as well. And again, a little bit of liquid white to thin the paint. We'll go into some green with a little phthalo green. Liquid white green and phthalo green. And really, again, Tap the bristles. Get that little ridge of paint on the end. You're just pushing in the paint like that. Okay. Maybe this boy is out here. Let me see here. I'll make that a little brighter. One second. There we go. Like that, a little green bush there. Now when I do red bushes, for red, I don't like to use liquid white because it makes it pink. So I dip into a little bit of thinner, just a little bit, and really shake it off. And you dip into the thinner, shake it off, and then dab it on a paper towel. And then you can go into a little bit of red. Just tapping, see? I'll put a red bush right in here. A little more. A little more color. Yeah, we're just tapping. See, and that comes right off of there. Go back to my brush with the yellow. Again, tap, 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 tap. I'm going to come out here. That boy there. Also going to reflect some of him. 
Don't blame it. Shoot. Don't do that. <laughs> Let's scrape him off of it. He'll be in the reflections anyways, but we need to pull these reflections down, which we did not do. So we'll just take our brush here and don't worry about that because I'm going to do a pull these banks down and we'll take that with it. Same thing on this side. I'm even going to add a little dark to my brush. Same thing on this side, just to add a little bit of that dark color. Pull down. Good. Clean that brush, and then gently across. Good. And we'll come over here in these trees. We'll reflect those down as well. I'm going to have another pen peninsula on this side, so I'm not too worried about the rest of these. But over here, we're just doing the opposite with the brush, that's all. The same thing here. Doesn't have to be exact for these reflections. Take our big brush, and we'll pull that down. And then across. Pull this down a little more. A little more color in here. Yeah, same thing here. Pull that down. Now I can reflect some of this into the water. <laughs> so we'll just take the brush and you're just reversing it down here. Get a little bit of this over here. And the one that had the green, we're going to hit some of that. There. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to come into some liquid white again. Put that over here. And Change the color up a little bit with the yellow and a little bit of the ochre. Pop out there. And then we'll reflect that as well. As well as some of the red. yellow again. Good. Okay. I'm 
Now we'll come under here. Maybe that comes like that. Maybe it's like that where there's reflections. Good. Now we're going to come back and pull down these reflections ever so gently, ever so gently. Barely touch. Barely touch. Just like that. Wipe your brush off. And then gently whisper across. Bring this further out. There we go. All right. Now we're going to come in and put a water line on this side. And for that, I will use a little bit of the titanium white. I'm going to start it up here. I'm going to kind of move my bank a little bit. See that? Very good. And we're going to put a little bit of a bank, some rocks. Just a little dirt. A little brown and white. Yeah. A little bit of dirt under there. And go back into that pretty yellow. Reload. And again, we'll reflect this underneath. Same thing here. I want some red and Indian yellow. Just touching. And right on the end, we'll put a little yellow sparkler. And then reflect all those colors underneath. Take our brush gently down. And 
and gently across. And on the end, put a little green bush. Reflect that down. A lot of that's going to get covered. We'll have another peninsula. Alright, then come back. Again, pull that one down and across. Okay, put in a little bank over there. Again, some brown, some sienna, a little white. For our highlight, for the bank itself, just some dark. There we go. That's going to be covered up. All right, now we'll highlight that with that brown and white mix. Just, just tickle on the top. A little white. A little Indian yellow. Ochre drizzle. Something like that. Very good. And we can take our brush that had the yellows and stuff and just kind of come over that rock a wee bit. In spots. I tell you what, I think on this one here, put a couple red flowers. Perfect. Same thing on this side. I think he's missing. Just a few spots. Some red flowers. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put a little water line over here. A little bit of the white. I like to vary my water lines so there's not just straight. You can make a couple different ones. And that's going to be covered up, so we're not too worried about that. Also take a little bit of that white. A little ripple or two. Ripple here because the water is pushing through this small little area. Something like that. All right. Okay, now the last thing we got to do here is push in this little peninsula. 
which I can do with my fan brush. So right here, let's get some color. And we're just going to push in a pushing in the color. That's all we're doing. Again, you could use a paint roller, as Bob would say. We're just pushing in some color. Up a few spots. Fill her in. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Biden pooped his pants. <laughs> awesome. Thank you again, Andy. I appreciate it, buddy. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here, which I should have done in the other spots, is soak up some of this paint. So I'm just going to kind of dab it and get some of those oils out of there. Very good. Now we're going to put a we'll put a little path in here. Okay, so we're just going to etch a little path. Then we're going to put a bunch of foliage here, and then we'll be done with it. So we got our we got our dark. So we'll just again we'll take some of this. I'm going to take some of this ochre up here, a little of the dark color, a little of the browns, a little more ochre. And again, leave it marbled so you have all that variation of color. And cut across a little bit. Put a little white so we can see it. Maybe about like that. It's probably about all we need. Yeah, man, I can do that. Just let me know. And this painting is for sale. This little white, bring it out a little bit. Just a little bit. Good. All right, now let's go back to our bush brushes. Go into that yellow again. I'm just using the top corner of my one inch brush. Tap, 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 tap. So let's add some bushes in here. So right up here. Like that. Okay, we'll chuck a few more of the yellow ones down here. Again, I'm just 
touching and it comes right off. The trick is thin your paint with your liquid white. Get that paint a little thinner than that base paint and these things will come right off. Good. I'll go with a little green, a little yellow, a little ochre, and a little red. Just touch. Bring it down over that path a little bit. Come back to the brush with the red. Comes like that. Fill in a couple little spots. Good. And go back to the yellows. So a little liquid white. Back into this yellow. And again, just tapping the brush. See, you get these little bushes in the paint. That's what you want. When you get those little bushes in your paint, that's what you got in your brush. See that? And that's what we're looking for. Okay, same thing. Go a little green. Just to change it up. Oops, a little more. Too dark. Come back to our red and a little bit of the uh, Indian yellow. And again, we're just going to touch. here come to this bottom I'm going to tap a little bit of color on here real quick. Bring out that little flower a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Might even go back here. I'm going to highlight just a few little spots. That helps. I like that. Just a touch. Not too much. I think I'm done here. I'm going to sign it. Um, I will absolutely come back and uh, make a couple corrections, fix a couple things. But overall, it's not too bad. Um, so, uh, pretty happy with that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Spin that brush, spin that brush, and come right down here. There we 
There she goes, JC. Uh, but for now, y'all be good. Take care, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. More to come, uh, both uh, with tutorials and live paintings on TikTok and YouTube. So please go check me out at Jeff's Oil Paintings, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, at Jeff's Oil Paintings. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you guys soon.